I'm Mary Lou Ray. The saint this week is Saint Catherine of Siena. She is one of women saints who is the, has the formal proclamation of Doctor of the Church. This means that her teachings and writings are timeless and true. There is so much more to learn about her and her influence on popes, but today I'm going to share with you about her youth. St. Catherine was born in Siena, Italy in 1347. She was the youngest of 25 children. Her twin sister did not survive birth and half of her siblings did not survive childhood. When Catherine was young, she would sometimes kneel on every step on the way up or down to say a Hail Mary. When she was six, she and her brother were on their way home from her sister's house when she stopped at a standstill in the road. Her eyes were gazing up at heaven and she could not hear her brother calling her. When, she went, when he went back to grab her hand, she burst into tears. Her vision of Christ seated in his glory with the apostles, Peter, Paul, and John had faded. By a secret vow of consecration, Catherine gave her whole life to God because of this vision. She preferred time of prayer and solitude. And when she did go out with other children, it was to teach them how to pray and love the Lord as she did. When Catherine was 16, her parents wanted her to marry the widower of her sister who had died in childbirth. Catherine opposed this, knowing that she had committed her life to Jesus. When they pressed her, she cut off her golden brown hair to make herself less desirable and began fasting. Knowing that Catherine preferred her solitude, her, her room was taken away from her and she was given menial tasks about the household and to serve her family. Catherine later, described this time of serving her family as tolerable because she viewed her father as a representation of Jesus and her mother as Our Lady and her brothers as the apostles. Catherine bore this type of persecution with such patience and humility that her parents finally relented and gave her a small space for her prayer and solitude and allowed her to take the habit of a Dominican tertiary. After her much time of solitude and prayer, Catherine armed with the faith to overcome assaults of the enemy and fierce temptations. She is the patroness of some of these. And with her time of solitude and preparation over, she went out to share the story of salvation with her neighbors. As a Dominican tertiary, Catherine worked in the hospitals and often took cases that others avoided, like those of lepers and cancers. Catherine won many of these over to the love of God by her devotion to their care. Later, when the plague broke out, Catherine devoted her time to helping many prepare for death. She aided in the recovery of many as well. Catherine's devotion to the sick during this time of the plague is so similar to many who have served the sick over the last couple of years. Catherine is the patroness of nurses and those who are ridiculed for their faith. She is the patroness of the United States and Italy against fire, illness, sexual temptations, and miscarriages. I hold a special connection to Catherine since my husband and I were married in St. Catherine's Church in Denver, and we named one of our daughters Catherine. And remember, this could be you.